Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Novak again with a video on lighting. Now, before you decide to buy any lighting system for your, your freshwater planted aquarium, maybe you may want to look at some of my videos that I've been putting out. The bulb on the left is a 100 light watt LED. On the right, 850 watt LED. One puts out 1700 luminous and this one puts out 2200 luminous for one light bulb. Now if you use my idea and make the fixture that I tell you, you could use any one of these lights depending on how bright you want it in your tank. I'm using an SCA aquarium 24 by 24. Now the 150 watt bulb here, I bought it just Menards. This is a Menards product and uh, our one that they sell. And as you see, it's 2200 luminous. Put three of these in the light fixture that I explained, this light fixture. If you put three of those in there, each light holds 60 LEDs. That makes uh, 180 LEDs that you'll be using at less than 100 watts of power. 180 LEDs. These LEDs are extremely bright and these are 5000 K. And the only reason I start using these compared to the 6500 because people are claiming they can't get the 6500K. So I've been experimenting with the 5000K for the hobbyists. And it seems to be working quite well. 5000K lights and the T5 and T8 lights is nothing new. We've used those over 25, 30 years ago. Uh, they were called power twist and they came about 5,000 to 5,500 K but This particular light at the cost will cost you less than one-fourth of a Kessel Amazon Sun that's the big $400 one. This is an extremely bright light. It will literally literally trump a Kessel light. Kessel light can't even compare to this. You're talking 180 LEDs within that fixture. You would use one fixture per 24 inches of tank. So if you had a four foot tank you'd have to make two of them. Otherwise this particular square aquarium which is 24 by 24 uh, one light is more than enough especially if you use the 100 watt or if you use the 150 watt that is really going to make it penetrate even deeper. One thing I've noticed using these high output lights is look at the profuse purling of the plants. Now the micro bubbles are being caused because of CO2. I use CO2, I've been using CO2 for 30 plus years. And because the CO2 is being pumped into the sump and then the sump has blown the CO2 out uh, that's the problem why I got the 7-up look. But I just want to show you the profuse purling of the plants. This is uh, Monte Carlo. The Monte Carlo here has been growing quite nice now without extra fertilizer. I don't use extra fertilizer in my substrate. That's just going to mess you up. But the Mar Monte Carlo has been taken off. But you can see that purling of this sword right here and of course the java fern is actually if you look at some of my older videos you you will see how in four and a half months this java fern has literally dominated just about everything in the tank it has grown so fast that uh well, that's normally what happens to me with Java Fern. It usually takes over everything. But anyway, the Dwarf Baby Tear and the Monte Carlo is purling very, very good. 
and as you can see some of the big oxygen bubbles caused because of the plant where they're getting caught up in there so this uh, this light really seems to be doing the trick for about uh, less than one-fourth the price of one Kessel Amazon Sun which is over 400 bucks and this of course is your dwarf baby tear and you can see it pearly so this extremely bright light is making it photosynthesize quite nice that's why it's growing and of course like I said I don't add any fertilizer tabs or anything to the, my substrate all I notice is that's going to cause all kinds of algae problems so I, I kind of stay away from that I've done this too long and it just causes nothing but trouble but just to give you a little hint of how the tank is doing with this particular light look at the profuse purling of the sword here this is a red sword and it is really under these lights purling good and all the plants are growing good uh, like I said before though the only bad thing is is the Java fern is if you look at my older videos you'll see how much this Java fern has grown it's actually just taken over everything and I bet you within a year that whole uh, left side of the tank is just going to be full of Java fern also but it's part of the aquarium hobby you know you, you got to give some you're going to lose some you're going to get some um, it just you can't be so picky about it you're not going to be successful with every plant you're going to use and some plants I don't want to use with this particular tank because I look for very low maintenance aquariums when I do my plants I don't want very high maintenance where I'm constantly cutting plants trimming plants no that's I don't like that I like very low maintenance uh, aquariums and the reason I picked this SCA aquarium is I don't want a bunch of tubes pipes motors and some of my other videos I explain about the new pump that I'm using and that pump is uh, pumping 2,000 gallons an hour through this aquarium it's uh, a DC pump and it went out over the Eheims and Supremes and it's doing a very good job with this particular aquarium in fact you don't even see the outlets really of them pumping I don't even need any extra pumps good thing is this has a sump this particular aquarium has a sump and you don't see anything so before you go buy any lighting maybe you want to think about making this kind of lighting and it will definitely pay for itself with the money you save compared to buying any of your light strips or your Kessel lights or anything else. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.